Good afternoon. Our speaker today is Rebecca de la Fuente, and uh, she is going to tell us about her uh, PhD work at the FISC. She, Rebecca has nicely volunteered to give one of these confinement talks. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, hi all. Uh, I find, uh, I hope everything is going fine in these times. So today I'm going to talk about a work that started, started with a collaboration with Eric Van Seville, which is an oceanographer, um, uh, research in uh, applied physics in the ocean. Um, and also, uh, of course, it, it, uh, it is a work that uh, um, is inside of my PhD program here at the FISC and uh, developed it with Gabor, uh, Cristobal and Emilio. And we analyzed uh, the transport uh, properties of sinking microplastics and focusing, focused in the Mediterranean Sea. Well, uh, the, the presentation uh, is distributed uh, in this way. We will first uh, start with the motivation of this work and then I will explain the dynamics of the microplastic particles. Uh, the, 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 equations of, the equations of motion that applies to the microplastic. Uh, then the method, methodology and data that we use. And then I will, I will show you the main results we have, the conclusions and future research that we can do in this line. So the first point is to understand what we study, how and why. Well, uh, we study the vertical distribution and dispersion properties of microplastic in the Mediterranean basin. Uh, how is by, by looking at the maxi relief framework or derivation of uh, some equation of motion that applies to passive plastic uh, particles and we can apply to uh, microplastics. And after half the, having the dynamics uh, that can explain uh, the, this transport, and then we apply statistical methods uh, to understand the dispersion properties or the distribution in the vertical, in the vertical water column. And why? Um, well, uh, in the beginning of the study of the distribution of microplastics, uh, most of research people uh, look at the distribution at the surface in the ocean. Um, and the, the, general, um, the general dynamic that they follow is that because of the con convergence of the Eggman turn in the, equation, in the motion, uh, they converge in the oceanic chiles, but uh, at, there started to appear a discordance between the amount of plastic that enters into the ocean and the plastic that is found at the surface. Uh, in the sense that in, in the, with a data that we have only 1% of the disaspected plastic at the surface in, uh, in, of the ocean. So, um, a problem arises called the missing plastic problem and then a lot of research people started to look uh, to try to solve this this problem and of course now it's known that uh, this this uh, material follows actually a three-dimensional pathways instead of being a two-dimensional um, even, even if we have more than half of the plastic to be buoyant. And there are a lot of different reasons because, because this occurs. Um, this picture uh, here uh, in, the, in this upper figure um, is shown by the Topios group, uh, which is the project uh, associated to the, to the people in, with who I work in the Netherlands. Um, they try to answer this question by relating the, the amount of plastic that is, is uh, follow different processes, no? Like, okay, we have uh, more or less uh, eight 
million of tons in, of plastic entering into the ocean. Uh, but then uh, they follow different processes uh, through the full domain. Also because we have different polymer types of plastic and then also the dynamics that they follow are quite different. So they try to find, okay, how amount of them, um, of this material is going to sink uh, or remain in the water column or finally uh, reach the ocean floor and start to be a sediment or how amount of plastic uh, return to the coast uh, through the process known as beaching or how much uh, is ingested or is affected by the biofouling uh, process in which um, if you I think you know but biofouling is a very important uh, process that happens in which um, algae and uh, biological material in the surface attach to the to the plastic surface and then um, we have like a new ecosystem uh, that it uh, get, reach very high density and then it started to sink and oscillate in the water column and it's known that uh, biofouling occurs uh, for uh, very much quantity of plastic, but we restri restricted in this study to analyzing uh, very small microplastic because there is also one process which is the fr continuous fragmentation of plastics to more and more uh, small microplastics. And as we see known that once it reaches a very small size, then it's, it the, the dynamics started to change from active to passive motion and um, then it's like uh, it only depends on physical properties a size and density of the particle uh, for the dynamics of the of the motion um, and this continuous fragmentation uh, is the is the key point that we take into account here uh, because we know that uh, that is a crucial process that occurs for all the microplastics uh, for a long term, in a long term. Um, and also very important uh, for us is that, okay, we focus on this very small microplastic, but it's, it's true that it follows uh, the density uh, distributes the, this plastic according to, to, the, to the physical properties. And the, the, the answer is yes. Uh, for example, in this study by Enrica Sola and um, other people, they show that uh, for very small plastic um, and from sampling methods, uh, they find that most dense uh, or less buoyant uh, plastic is found in the deep sea, whereas very buoyant plastic is almost not found along the water column, deep sea, but, the, but is the most found uh, close to the surface. So there is a dependence on density for the uh, distribution along the vertical column. Um, and this is quite important uh, to to understand that, uh, well, the, or to, uh, to assess that the physical properties of the particles actually uh, matters in the dynamics. Uh, here, for example, uh, we look at the physical properties of the microplastics in order to look at the, before looking at the equations of motion. Uh, first, we look at the size. And here we have also um, a picture from COSAR in which this, which we, we look or we see that there is a size selective uh, distribution of microplastic. Um, here we have the, the radio size of the plastic in, on, in the horizontal axis. And in the vertical axis, we have the the amount of plastic that we find at the ocean surface. 
and also it is estimated at the Mediterranean Sea and at, and at the other hand in the open ocean. So at one hand we can observe that uh, the most abundant plastic is one uh, with very small sizes around uh, one millimeter and there is a um, gradual decreasing of finding plastics with higher sizes. And also very interesting is that from this value, this peak, and below this peak, uh, we find a removal of plastics in, in the surface, which also agrees with, um, with the fact that uh, when microplastic starts to be very, very small, then it, it loses buoyancy and it started to be more or to transport more as passive uh, motion. Also, I would like to say here that we focus in the Mediterranean Sea in this work because uh, the results can be extrapolated to the other oceans or to general oceans. Because, um, because it has the general patterns of circulation. But also it's a, uh, there's an important point here that, and is that the Mediterranean has, I don't remember exactly the, uh, yes, here I have it. Uh, it has 55% uh, of the floating ocean plastic particles of all, or, 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 or all of over the world, which is very much, but also it has the 18% of biodiversity uh, of marine species. So it's not very difficult to realize that the Mediterranean Sea is one focus uh, space uh, in which the risk of, of this new uh, platysphere is, is arising, no? or that uh, there is a risk, a risk for, for the loss of biodiversity. Well, this is uh, one thing, uh, the sizes. Uh, also, we can, we can see that the, the typical uh, sizes for microplastic ranges in, 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 this, in this regime from 0 0.2 until uh, 4 millimeters. <clears throat> and for the density, we can look at the most common polymer types <clears throat> and compare it to the seawater density, which here is fixed at uh, 1,025 uh, kilograms per meter, uh, per, per meter uh, cubic. And then uh, we have that, okay, uh, a bit less than half of plastic actually are uh, sink no are, are, are not uh, are less buoyant uh, than see what the density uh, so this means that we can apply to um, to um, a great variety of plastic uh, for the equation of motion uh, we start from the maximum relay cutting long equation the simplest uh, the simplest equation, uh, which is derived from a very large equation in which we have uh, facts and corrections uh, that also takes into account the history term of the, of the particle. But in this simple form, um, we, we can apply it if the particle uh, fulfill these two conditions. One is that um, the Reynolds number of the particle has to be uh, much smaller than one, uh, which means that the B squeeze terms has to be um, has to be uh, bigger than inertial terms, so the particle uh, moves as a, in a as a laminar in, in a laminar way and not in a turbulent way. And also the radius of the particle has to be much smaller than the Kolmogorov scale, you know, which is the typical uh, scale uh, for the variation of the flow in the ocean. So if we fulfill these two conditions, we can start with this equation, 
which depends on three different or is parameterized by three different parameters, beta, stock time, and sinking velocity. And in the final term, they are um, depending on the size of the, of the particle and on the density, which is here the raw P. Well, um, this equation, if we look at the stocks time, I the, the stocks number, which is the ratio between the stocks time and the and the Colmore of um, time scale of the ocean, uh, we see that is much smaller than one because the, the time uh, scale of the ocean is approximately one second. So, so then we can look, oh, let's say, only at the stock's time. And because we have from the first condition that the radius of the particle is much smaller than the Colmore of scale, then we have uh, the, that this condition, uh, well, this is uh, fulfilled and then we do a Taylor expansion around the stocks, the stocks time, uh, the stocks number. And then we, can, we, well, we find this new approximation in which we add uh, the Coriolis term and the unresolved scales for which we can also um, look if they are negligible or not to the dynamics. Then, uh, we finally find this complete equation for which we are going later to analyze which terms are relevant and which not. The important point here is to look if we can apply these equations to the microplastic particles and because we find that the, the density of the particles is in this range um, if you remember here, if we consider the typical density of particles, we are in, in, in this regime in which we consider, um, well, PS, PEST, PA, and acrylic. Um, okay, so in this range, and by considering uh, the seawater density as uh, 1,025 kilogram, kilogram per meter cubic, then we have beta between 0 0.8 and 1. So we look at the sinking velocity as a function of the radius of the particle. To look uh, not, not only quantita quantitatively, but also qualitatively uh, in which regime we are. So we do isolines of uh, uh, beta parameter equal to 0 0.8. So if we, we return to the sinking velocity, it depends uh, on the particle radius through the stocks, uh, through the stocks uh, number, uh, through the stocks time, sorry. Um, uh, and okay, and beta is fixed, okay. So then our particles are, in this region, right? But we add the two conditions that we have to fulfill here for the validation of this equation. Such the Reynolds number of the particle is fixed to one to see this limit, and also the Kolmogorov of scale uh, for which we need that particle has to be below this, this value. So finally, we find this very uh, shadow um, re region and we can assess that this is regime in which we can apply the equa this equation of motion. So then we can finally say that the sinking velocity has to be smaller than this value 0 0.015 meters per second and that uh, the, the radius of the particle has to be uh, below 0 0.3 millimeters. Okay, so now we have the questions of motion. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, can, we have seen that it can be applied to uh, very small microplastic particles, uh, which is uh, also good because we know that there is a continuous fragmentation of them in the ocean, and then 
finally we can apply uh, for very much quantity of, of this material. So now we look at the this vertical distribution and this version properties. And to do it, uh, we do use of the NEMO model, uh, which is an oceanic model for, uh, which solves the primitive equations, and for we, uh, for, from which we use the velocity flow of the fluid. And I have used uh, the Lagrangian computation from Parcel, which is a set of Python, uh, Python um, code that was um, developed by, by the group uh, from the Utrecht uh, of, uh, University of Utrecht. Um, so I learned to, how to compute the trajectories from this, uh, from, this, from this computational tool. And then I have uh, released uh, this number of particles from one meter depth and with a fixed uh, sinking velocity for each particle in all the trajectories. So I fix uh, all the particles at one meter depth, equally distance it, and they start to sink. Uh, and for the sinking behavior, I will talk depending on, on the study that I do, but just to not be confused uh, later, just uh, thing that we, I, I, well, uh, we most use three different uh, sinking velocities or set different velocities or three different scenarios with different, three different sinking velocities. Uh, one which is uh, quite small, uh, this one, 6.2 meters per day. Um, okay. Another one which is 68.2 meters per day and the fastest sinking velocity, which is uh, around uh, to uh, 150 meters per day. Uh, okay. When considering uh, seawater density fixed, it is fixed uh, at 1,025 kilograms per meter cubic. And the particle density that we will use later is fixed at this one, but we can go back uh, at this point later. Parameters that are fixed. The particle radius at 0 0.05 millimeters. Okay, and the meter parameters in the range, of course. So, first we look at the relevance of the different terms involved with the dynamics. So, for doing so, uh, we have um, disclosed the different the, the, the equation uh, by looking at a reference one. Uh, which will be the, 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 the velocity of the particle will be influenced just by the external flow and the sinking velocity. But also we consider three other equations, but adding the different terms that we had in the, in the first equation, right? So this one, equation number one, okay, no, this equation number two, okay, uh, it has uh, the external flow, but also the inertial and the Coriolis term. The equation three considers the external flow, sinking velocity, and uh, the unresolved scales of the flow, which is uh, basically estimated from adding a white nose to the equation of motion, in which the diffusion terms uh, are calculated from the resolution of the velocity flow that we have in the oceanic model, NEMO. And equation one uh, is, uh, okay, the same that the, the equation as reference, but now uh, the fluid density is a variable. That is, it depends on the salinity and temperature at each point in the domain. So this beta will change also with time. Uh, this equation, um, okay, we, we just wanted to look at it because uh, maybe we are assuming all the time that the fluid density 
the variations in the fluid density along the water column uh, does not affect the dynamics, but maybe yes. So it's just to be sure that this assume, uh, assumption, uh, this, uh, okay, this um, maybe is not uh, the point no? that maybe it affects the dynamics. Um, so we consider for looking at the relevance of the different terms, uh, this R, which is the average uh, over all the particles of the distances between pair of particles that uh, are released from the same initial condition, but by using uh, two different equations. Uh, okay. So, it's important to say just one thing in, in this method that we also do, that is related to the sinking velocity. For doing so, we now fix the sinking velocity, which is, which is in the range of these parameters, okay, beta uh, in the range of 0 0.8 and, 9 and 1, and A is 0 0.05 millimeters. So, the sinking velocity is ranging in this range. But, each particle is released from one fixed sinking velocity for all uh, its trajectory. So for each, for each particle in the Mediterranean Sea, we have a different sinking velocity, but it, um, it is fixed for the, all the full trajectory uh, for each particle. So, uh, first, we look at the relevance of the Coriolis and inertial terms. And here, in these two plots, we have in the axis uh, the time in days. So the simulation goes from, from, okay, from to, uh, up to 20 days. And in the vertical axis, we have this average uh, final uh, particle distance, released from the different equations. Uh, in this case, it is uh, particles are released from uh, the equation zero and the equation two. And we compare uh, these, uh, the, well, here we have the, this mean of these uh, pair particle distances and the, and the standard deviation. Uh, but this mean is what is compared to the total uh, travel distance for particles that has been uh, transported uh, from equation zero. So the total distance traveled from this equation is compared to the um, pair particle distances uh, integrated from these two different equations to look if this, uh, this uh, effect is negligible or not. And we see that uh, for the horizontal distances, this effect, uh, the Coriolis and the inertial term, is less than 0.26%. And for the vertical is very, very small. Uh, this percentage is 0.05%. So this means that Coriolis and the inertial ter terms are negligible. And for the unresolved scales, for which we, do, we use uh, white noise for, for simulating, uh, for recovering these scales, um, we observe, okay, 12% uh, uh, in the horizontal displacement and 2% of, uh, of this term uh, for the vertical. So, so for the unresolved scales, uh, it seems that if one wants to look at the local properties of the flow, uh, it is important to look at. Um, okay, here uh, in the table here, we have the this uh, this mean uh, final pair particle distances. Uh, dependent, depend, uh, as, a, as a function of the different uh, sinking velocities or beta parameters. 
and this H and B is the total travel distance by particles uh, released from C the equation um, that I, we have used for comparing the um, comparing the effect of these terms. Now we go to this first equation, uh, I mean, to look if the fluid density uh, as a variable has an effect to the dynamics or not. So for doing so, uh, of course, we uh, expect that this has a higher effect to particles quite close to the surface. So we fix um, the density particle at this number because this number is the, the particle density that will be if we fix beta equal to 0 0.99 and the fluid density to this normal usual value of 1,025 kilograms per meter cubic. Um, and then we can assess that particles are going to remain uh, somehow close to the surface. So now beta varies, but not because of the particle density. Well, uh, in, in the previous simulations, uh, beta were fixed, okay. But I mean here, beta is a variable, but it not, does not depend on the particle density, but on the fluid density. So first, uh, here we have two plots um, in which in the horizontal axis we have uh, beta, the, the, this beta parameter, and in the vertical axis we have, um, okay, uh, the histogram, uh, well, no, it, it is a density distribution of, uh, okay, of this beta. Uh, when y particle sinks, so this means uh, we have the distribution of beta when particles are still in the at the surface, uh, then after 10 days of their trajectories and after 10, 20 days. And this in the upper figure, this is released in, in summer and in the, the bottom panel is released in winter. And we, look, we see this difference, which is quite expected, because uh, in summer we have a stratification of with, with layers, horizontal layers, of the physical properties of the, of the, of the ocean, no? like uh, density, fluid density, for example, or also temperature, okay. Uh, but in winter, there is, um, in, um, there exists an, there's a stabilization of the water column, and then uh, the density of the fluid, um, is, is, being is being homogeneous along the water column. So this is the reason why we find uh, after the different uh, times uh, of the trajectories, uh, almost the, the same distribution of betas in winter and not in summer. Uh, in the right, we have also two different plots <clears throat> for which uh, we have used the um, the summer simulation because uh, okay we expected that okay if if the density of the fluid uh, we assume that is variable let's uh, let's look at the scenario in which we have uh, more variability with depth uh, okay so as before uh, we com we look at the and the importance of this term by comparing uh, the final distances traveled by particles to the, uh, to the difference between pair, pair particle distances when released from the different equations. So this for the, the upper figure is for the horizontal displacements and the bottom figure is for the vertical displacements. After, so after uh, 30 days, we do this comparison 
and we finally find that uh, for the horizontal then this um, this variability uh, on the fluid density has an effect of 50 percent on the dynamics and has an effect of 8.40 percent on in the vertical dynamics so uh, if we compare this effect of these presentations to the unresolved scales effect, we see that the, this effect variable fluid density is less but, but quite similar to the unresolved scales. So this means that if one wants to analyze the general uh, patterns uh, of motion um, in the ocean, then uh, then it's not necessary to consider the fluid density as a variable. But if one one instead uh, look at the local, uh, the local properties, then of course, uh, or of course not, but we see that, yes, it is important. Okay, now, uh, then, okay, as, as a conclusion here, we can, say that because we are interested in the general patterns um, only the, um, the main terms in the equation of motion is the external flow and the sinking velocity that we add to the particle that is determined by the density and size of the particle so from now we just release particles with fixed density flu fixed fluid density and because we have seen that this is the relevant terms uh, with the simplest uh, equation. Um, okay, we, we take into account for look at the vertical distributions and for dispersion properties. Um, okay, so now uh, we consider uh, these parameters here, um, which are related to to the final uh, sinking velocities uh, of uh, one, uh, 150 meters per day, uh, 68 meters per day, and six meters per day. Uh, so we release particles from these three different scenarios, okay, with the simplest equation. And we first look at the vertical distribution. And for doing so, um, we 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 uh, do a we rescale the, the depth of the of, of theta of the depth uh, by considering uh, okay by considering the mean the mean uh, theoretical depth and the variance of the of this uh, theta coordinate. I mean, um, uh, sorry, I mean if uh, we release particles from the surface when then we look at the final distrib the, the final um, the final uh, dispersion from uh, the mean depth so so and, and then we uh, plot here for the three different scenarios um, the this distribution of the set of depth of particles for different times of their trajectories. Um, so, in the upper figure, we have the uh, slowest, uh, slowest, no, uh, fastest sinking particles. So, for these particles, uh, yeah, you 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 can think that uh, particles. Uh, reach bottom uh, the, the bottom uh, of the ocean uh, quite uh, fast and here in the lower figure we have the slowest um, this the, the low the slowest uh, sinking particles and in those lines we have a normal distribution in order to compare um, what is happening uh, so we compute uh, in the horizontal axis uh, the rescale distribution, uh, yes, the rescale uh, variable of the depth by taking into account the theoretical mean depth 
and the uh, and the standard deviation of the particle. So we estimate this uh, this uh, standard deviation from the from the distribution that we have in the particles. Um, and we have these these results. And if one looks, um, we find that for very short or earlier times, um, distribution are quite um, far from normal distribution. And it seems that normal distribution are recovering uh, when we reach uh, higher, uh, uh, when we are in later times. And we try to find an explanation by looking at the, at the dispersion properties, because this deviation from Gaussian distributions uh, is related to anomalous, dis anomalous, yes, anomalous dispersion. So, what do we do? Well, the point is that we want to look at the variance of the of the depth that uh, that particles takes, uh, and then look at the at the diffusion exponent, this new here. And for doing so, uh, we compute here uh, as a function of time uh, the, um, the 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 variance of the depth reached by particles and look how it evolves with time. So here we have, again, the fastest thinking particles and here the lowest thinking particles. And just from a first look, we can observe that we have different um, regimes with different uh, diffusion laws. So for example, here, which is, uh, for the fastest uh, sinking particles, we see three different regimes. A slopes here, black slopes, uh, all corresponds to, uh, uh, sorry, the different uh, pits, pits here corresponds only to two slopes, one and two. So here, for example, uh, in the beginning of, in the beginning of the simulation for the fastest sinking, uh, we look at regime that is super diffusive uh, because uh, the diffusion exponent is greater than two. But this, this occurs only for times um, less than one day. And after that, we recover a normal diffusion and around uh, day 4.5, uh, we get a um, um, uh, bachelor's regime. Um, a ballistic diffusion with uh, with the diffusion coefficient equal to two. Um, okay, we can uh, we can try to to answer why this is happening. We have not um, an analytical explanation of why this is happening, but we can explain qualitatively uh, what is happening from the results. So. The first transition, or no, let's say the first transition, not the first um, super diffusive behavior that we have in all the simulations, um, may be related to the autocorrelation of the flow in, the, in, in the beginning of the, of the simulations. And of course, also because of the structure of the flow uh, in the first layers uh, close to the surface of the ocean. And then it, it recovers a normal diffusion, uh, which is quite uh, usual in oceanic, oceanic turbulence. Uh, and this is what uh, we expected uh, also for long times. But um, okay, we have here a um, um, ballistic regime. And uh, we wanted to, uh, to uh, understand what is happening. Uh, and well, what we we look is that uh, the mean velocities, the, the mean vertical velocities, 
uh, through all the Mediterranean are different. So there exists a patchiness or this uh, mean vertical velocity, and this is the source of this of this um, diffusion re uh, regime. So uh, we wanted to explain it analytically or try to to, to understand it, and and then uh, we we did a model in which uh, each depth uh, for a particle is uh, modeled as uh, the mean depth uh, plus two different tens. Uh, one, con uh, one corresponding to a normal diffusion and another one corresponding to ballistic diffusion. So W, bar W, is for each particle I, um, the average of the vertical velocity along, the, along all its trajectory. So it's an average of the vertical velocity along the trajectories. And this part W is also shown here in, in, in all the, in the Mediterranean uh, basin. So we can look at the variability in the, in, or the spatial variability in the Mediterranean. And its patchiness is clear. So, so we can um, assume that uh, this, uh, this transition or this crossover from normal to, to, um, to this bachelor, uh, to this ballistic uh, regime is due to, to this uh, different in the mean flow, in the mean uh, vertical velocity. Uh, but okay, uh, let's see if, if this model uh, works. Uh, so here we have um, the ballistic term, and here we add a uh, normal um, diffusion, uh, which uh, is dependent of the diffusion coefficient. Uh, okay, so these uh, fl um, okay, fluctuations uh, we have uh, means uh, zero mean, okay, and these variance. Uh, so if we if we estimate um, the, from here, if we estimate the, the variance of the depth reached by particles, then this will be this uh, zeta, which, okay, this will be theoretically this, no? Uh, so now, if we equate both terms, the ballistic to the normal, then we expect to find the times at which this crossover takes place. So this D will be this average of the diffusion coefficient, okay? Uh, which is basically estimated from a fit uh, here in the different, in this, these two different uh, uh, scenarios in the normal regime. And W also is estimated from, from the different uh, vertical velocities, no, as shown here in this plot. And finally, we find that this time uh, agrees with uh, what we obtained because here we obtain that in the first simulation or scenario uh, for the fastest sinking velocities, we find that this crossover takes place around this uh, value of 4.5 days. And for the, for the also uh, fast but not so fast sinking velocities, uh, we find that this time of course around uh, this crossover takes place around 11 or 12 days. So it is around here. So it agrees with what we obtain quality, uh, okay, yes, uh, from the numerical results. Uh, but of course, um, this uh, could be explained um, because uh, okay, yeah, by, by this difference. Um, uh, but, okay. but it's important also to say that, um, that, uh, yeah, okay, this is one thing. But for the first transition, um, we, we look uh, if there is a spatial dependence of this crossover. 
So we look at the variance of the depth um, by looking not at the time, but at the mean depth or the theoretical depth that particles uh, reach here in this final plot. And we observe that this first re uh, crossover from super diffusion to normal diffusion takes, takes place for all the different scenarios around one, uh, 100 meters. So this means that um, there exists uh, different um, or a division or spatial structure of the, of the flow which um, affects the, um, the vertical dispersion dynamics. So, as a conclusion, uh, we can say that, okay, we can apply the maximum relay derivation uh, <clears throat> as a, for the, as an equation of motion for analyzing the, the transport for the microplastic, very small microplastic. And we can do it by taking into account uh, two, two conditions. One is the, the, the very small particle size, which has to be smaller than 0 0.3 mil mi millimeters, but also that the sinking velocity has to be fixed um, or has to be smaller than 0 0.015 meters per second. And then um, we have to consider only uh, density and part, um, size particles that are within these uh, ranges or fulfill these two conditions. But okay, um, this applies for very much um, quantity of plastics. So um, the second uh, conclusion is that Coriolis and inertial terms are negligible. Um, and also that uh, seawater density and, and uh, unresolved scales uh, are negligible if one wants to consider um, the, general, the general properties of the flow, but, but maybe uh, one has to consider if one wants to, to actually look at the local properties. Uh, also important that there exist uh, different diffusion laws that go that are governed the, are governed, uh, govern the dynamics of the vertical uh, transport and that um, super diffusion takes place um, due to the um, to the uh, correlation of the of the um, particle particles motion uh, but after the super diffusion, we get a normal diffusion. And after that, uh, for the fastest uh, sinking velocity, um, we find um, a, bachelor's, a bachelor's or ballistic regime. Uh, because uh, we find a, a patchiness in the, in the Mediterranean Sea due to the different uh, sinking velocities. Um, or to or related to local properties in the in the flow um, such okay we have for example this um, downwelling and upwelling um, processes uh, which are um, it's the source of this patchiness um, also, I would like to say it uh, as a conclusion that, uh, of course, we have that um, for the fastest, uh, fastest sinking particles, uh, of course, uh, we reach, um, okay, the, 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 the autocorrelation of the flow uh, decays also much, much faster. So this is the reason because maybe we find this uh, second crossover in the two first scenarios, but not in the third scenario. Um, and of course, also it's very important that we have um, um, a vertical dependent uh, structure of the, 
of the dispersion properties. Um, yeah. Okay, in the future, um, we, we want to measure these dispersion properties in other regions of the ocean, not only in the Mediterranean, <coughs> to look if we get these uh, crossovers also. Um, but of course, um, it will be really interesting um, um, of applying um, this equation of motion to look at the uh, accumulation regions of microplastics. Um, so, thank you. Thank you very much, Becca. So, we have some time for questions or comments. I have a question of curiosity, Rebecca. Uh, in the data that you showed at the beginning of the uh, size distribution of these microplastics, how is this data obtained? It's by sampling methods. Um, this one. This one is, yeah, this one is, um, yes, it's estimated at the surface. So it's just by sampling methods from both and from um, submerged um, um, nets. Yeah, with nets. Uh, actually, the, the net grid size of this, of, for sampling, is uh, in this smaller size of 0 0.2 millimeters, is the mass of the grid for the the grid for re recollect to collecting the microplastic. So actually, um, for example, here there's a um, removal of plastics uh, below one millimeter. But also this method of sampling uh, could also uh, be uh, influencing this removal, no? because uh, plastic particles actually are not spherical as we are considering. Um, so of course, uh, some of them can escape. No? Um, so it's important to say that Yes, uh, of course, uh, particles start to be passive and start to sink uh, due to biofalling or because um, okay, they are more affected by the external flow. But also, um, in order to compare well with uh, data, for example here, uh, it's important to take into account that this sampling method um, um, yeah, um, can also affect this graphic. Do we have an idea of uh, I mean, how many plastics are there and, and which is the 10% that is sampled? I mean, how reliable is this data? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, Just curiosity. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't remember uh, how, how much, uh, how how many uh, different samples they took in this study, but I know that this in the in the whole uh, Mediterranean domain. Um, but no, I, I I don't know right now, and also I don't know if they also use a model for extrapolate the data to the to the full domain or just take into account the samples. Um, but I can take a look. Um, okay, I mean, it was just curiosity. Uh, I, I add something. Uh, I just, uh, well, and you, Rebecca, now this uh, is just that the, the, there is an estimation of how, how much plastic is released to, to the sea, to the Mediterranean, Mediterranean in particular. And, uh, and from the measurements at the surface, it happens that only 1% of what is supposed to be released is found at the surface. So, uh, mm -hmm. 
but it's a question of what, what is the rest. And then the, the rest should be, well, several hypotheses should be on the bottom, should be ingested mm. by animals, or would be mm -hmm. in the middle of the water column. So there are several hypotheses. But if you, I don't know exactly what are the extrapolation methods to, to estimate the, the, the amount of the surface, but if you do this at the surface, you only get 1% of what is supposed to be released mm -hmm. to the sea. This is an interesting yes. Um, yeah, of course. Um, a lot of uh, when when this one percent uh, was discovered, uh, a lot of research people started to look uh, okay uh, to solve this question, no? And uh, different pr processes uh, has been associated to it, like for example, turbulent mixing. Um, close to the surface, no? Like, uh, okay, particles maybe, uh, okay, there are some people that say, okay, uh, maybe uh, particles are removed from the surface through turbulent mixing and then they stay quite uh, in the subsurface layers, no? Uh, but also these uh, different processes like biofouling also is known that it removes a lot of plastic. Uh, and of course, the interaction with the biological activity plays a key role here. And uh, there are other processes, uh, of course, ingestion, no? uh, biopolling, um, turbulent mixing, but also beaching, for example, is known right now that half of the plastic returns to the beach and uh, started to be um, sedimented. Um, in the land or yeah but also for example is known um, that okay that uh, which is quite important for us is that this fragmentation into smaller and smaller species um, is one of the is also one important reason why do we don't observe this plastic um, and the reason is that one there is no um, uh, technical uh, tools to observe this very small plastic. Um, but also um, because it starts, it starts to sink. And um, there, there are no observation, observations um, or not uh, very much uh, publications that uh, look at samples uh, below 1,000 meters. So uh, we need uh, much more uh, data in order to um, to look at all models, no, or to to, to verify if all models actually can explain the three-dimensional pathways that it takes. Uh, also, yeah, that's very important, no, that um, that people started at the beginning to fear that uh, because plastic is mostly buoyant, it remains on the, at the surface, but at some point they, they realize that, okay, no, uh, actually it sinks and most of them does not uh, remain in the surface. And for example, it, have, it has been found a lot of plastic items in the Arctic ice. And the reason is that subsurface layers um, return, okay, return, no, uh, send or uh, transport uh, very small plastic to the, to the north. Um, through these um, subsurface layers, no, and it's the only way, let's say, that it can it can travel to there. And this is also one solved question. No, it's like okay, uh, if we find find uh, plastic here, is because actually we we have not to restrict the motion to a, to the two dimensional surface. Um, yeah, also in, in the deep ocean has been uh, reported um, quite a amount of plastic, sedimented, I mean. But it's not well known along the water column. Um, it's not, uh, it's not to know what is happening there. Uh, no more comments.
Well, if not, we can thank Rebecca and uh, we can stop the session here. Thank you.